Director and Representative of UN Environment Program, UNEP. Leo, you have the floor, please. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished ministers, vice ministers, ambassadors, delegates from the different countries, uh, international body representatives, civil society participants. What an honor this is for me on behalf of the UN Environment Program to welcome you for this high level launching of the Latin America and the Caribbean Circular Economy Coalition. I want to greet with great affection all of you. I also want to thank the presence of Mr. Mariano Castro, Vice Minister of Peru for Environmental Issues and Mr. Rolando Castro as well, who is the Energy Vice Minister in Air Quality for the Environment and Energy Ministry of Costa Rica, Mr. Walter Very, Vice Secretary, Ministry of Industry, Energy and Mining of Uruguay, and the representative of the Environment and Sustainable Development Ministry of Colombia, who is the chairman of the Coalition of Circular Economy. I also want to welcome and express my appreciation to all our colleagues and strategic partners of this coalition, IDB, the Climate Technology Center Network, the World Economic Forum, the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, and the Platform for Accelerating the Circular Economy Coalition, and uh, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. All of them with uh, the UN Environment Program have been working intensely throughout last year for the construction of this Circular Economy Coalition. This event for the launching of this coalition takes place in the framework of Ministers of the Environment of Latin America and the Caribbean, which is now taking place today and tomorrow. This forum is discussing issues of great concern for the entire region, climate change, loss of biodiversity, constant increase of pollution, social inequality, and unsustainable patterns of consumption and production, just to cite some of those issues that are all interconnected and they require great cooperation, more integral policies and systemic thinking. The Forum of Ministers is to adopt a decision entitled Sustainable Consumption and Production and Circular Economy, Key Factors for Sustainable Reconstruction Post-COVID-19. And with that, I also want to tell you that the establishment of this coalition responds to priorities, needs, and mandate given to us by our governments. This leads to two messages I want to share with you today. The first message, sustainable consumption and production patterns. The unsustainable ones are the reason for the climate environmental crisis, loss of biodiversity and pollution. We know this is an imperative. We have to change our linear economic model, turn it into a circular model. This is something we knew, and we were working on this long before the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm sure you will coincide with me that this pandemic has exposed many weaknesses of our economies and it has also deepened existing inequalities. People tell us that the important, what was important before 
is urgent today. Crisis we face make it mandatory for us to rethink systems sustaining our economies. We have to adapt ourselves to circumstances and take transformative measures that and now we have an historic opportunity to reconstruct and enhance for that we should immediately stop greenhouse effect gas emissions with consumption patterns and sustainable production as well and move towards circular economy all this according with commitments of the Paris Accord and the 2030 Agenda. My second message, circular economy offers solutions and great contributions to stop climate change, loss of biodiversity and pollution. Thus, foster a sustainable economic recovery. Circular economy has great potential for post-COVID-19 reconstruction of our economies, 4.8 million jobs, net jobs could be there for 2030 in the region, according to ECLAC and other bodies' estimates. Climate change, emissions gap report 2020 shows that the emissions gap has not grown smaller vis-a-vis -vis 2019. However, on the other hand, we know that circular economy may help us reduce 45% of total greenhouse effect gas emissions generated because of the way we manufacture and use products and the way we produce food. It's important for biodiversity and for cities. A circular economy eliminates waste and pollution. From this design, it maintains materials in use according to their highest value, and it regenerates natural systems. Adapting those systems, we can reduce the use of raw materials up to 99%, thus contributing to protecting biodiversity. Nonetheless, last week, the, the circular report was presented. The circularity report that has to do with the circularity gap with a key message. Our current economy is only circular up to 8.6%, not very much, very little. And to deepen, more on this, according to the study we've done at my organization, we analyze situation in cities in Latin America, in circularity of cities in the region. Uh, this has a very broad range, range between 1% and 20%. And this is according to the study done at UNEP. And this is a challenge we have before us. Because of all this, we applaud the launching of this Circular Economy Coalition. We invite you, all of you, to be part of this and to join efforts. To conclude, I want to congratulate Colombia, Peru, Costa Rica, and the Dominican Republic for their leadership in this coalition. And once more, I want to thank our strategic partners. Each one of you contributes unique value to this coalition. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leo, for your message, key message for all of us. Colombia has been a champion in circular economy at the national regional, global levels. It was the first country to express its interest and be part of this coalition. I want to welcome, yes, Minister Carlos Correa, Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development of Colombia. Unfortunately, 
because of last minute reasons, he has been called by Colombian President Duque. He's not going to be able to be with us, but let us project a message he was able to send us. Thank you so much, please. I want to start out by greeting in a very special manner, Leo Hanman, Regional Director and Representative of UN Environment Program in Latin America and the Caribbean. I also want to greet and thank Adriana Zacarias for her constant support throughout this process of consolidation of the Regional Coalition of Circular Economy. I also greet in a very special manner all the members of the steering committee of uh, the Circular Economy Coalition, Mr. Mariano Castro, Vice Minister of Environment of Peru, Rolando Castro, Vice Minister of the Environment of Costa Rica, Mr. Milagro de Camps, Vice Minister of Environment of the Dominican Republic, and I also want to greet and express my appreciation for support and interest of our strategic partners. The Reg Center of Climate Technology, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the IDB, and the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, the Platform for Accelerating the Circular Economy Coalition, and the United Nations Environment Program, and the uh, United Nations Industrial Development Organization and the World Economic Forum. They have supported us throughout the process for the consolidation of this very important regional coalition. Within the framework of this session of the Forum of Ministers of the Environment of Latin America and the Caribbean, we are meeting here today for the official high level launching of the Latin America and Caribbean Circular Economy Coalition. This coalition was created with the main purpose of creating a vision and regional uh, perspective, a comment with a holistic, well-integrated perspective and to share knowledge and tools to support transition towards a circular economy, always uh, uh, focusing the life cycle aspect of all this for 2030. Our vision is for Latin American and Caribbean countries. Well, we have already started to go from a linear economy to a model of circular economy, linking economic growth with environmental degradation and the use of resources. At the same time, we are enhancing and improving human well-being, the regeneration of the ecosystems and prosperity contribute thus to complying with the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Accords. At the same time, last December 14th, we held the high-level meeting of the Regional Circular Economy Coalition. We agreed on the working plan for 2021, and we reiterated the importance of issuing a call on all countries of the region so that they would be participating and joining this coalition to consolidate a common vision that would allow us to position Latin America and the Caribbean as one of the main regions that is going from a linear economy to a model of circular economy. Today, more than ever before and under the juncture, we are all experiencing it is uh, the utmost the necessity to promote actions in each one of the countries for us to be able to establish better consumption patterns and also better production patterns to have harmony between human health and the environment. This relationship is perhaps the most important teaching or lesson this pandemic is giving us. This has had an impact on different social spheres in our countries. Finally, let me highlight the importance of spaces like this meeting among ministers of the region where we're going to be speaking about environmental, urgent environmental issues throughout the region. The opportunity is for sustainable recovery and urgent actions for nature in the next decade for us to comply and honor SDGs and also the 2030 objectives and goals. 
Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, Minister Correa. He has highlighted the importance of the regional circular economy coalition for sustainable recovery and nature recovery. Thank you so much, Minister, and your technical team for their valuable support. Without further say, let me introduce to you in greater detail what it is that the Circular Economy Coalition will be doing objectives and the work we want to do. As you've already heard from the Regional Director and Minister Correa, this coalition gathers value and expertise of eight strategic partners, IDB, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, PACE, um, UNEP, and UNIDO and the World Economic Forum. They've all contributed in a very single fashion. We're joining efforts to avoid duplicating our work. How was this designed? Let me tell you, at the end of 2019, there was great interest in the region, the part of the governments, private sector, the academy, NGOs, and circular economy. We started seeing more and more initiatives and policies and strategies. So we started also supporting even more, giving more technical and financial support for those initiatives. And we were interconnecting our work. And this uh, was work being done almost simultaneously in the same week. So we said, why not create a coalition joining efforts and avoid duplication and thus be able to have a more comprehensive integrated support for all the countries with greater impact. That's how in 2019, we presented a proposal to the minister's forum and during the intersectional meeting, November, 2019, this was presented to all the environment ministers to create this coalition and countries expressed their great interest and they gave us the green light to do this. So we started working last year with us and the different countries to define the different objectives and the different terms for the creation of this coalition that will be responding to priorities and needs of countries of the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. The steering committee will be led by champion countries, countries working on circular economy. We have the support of Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, and Peru. They are going to be having this role for two years, and the steering committee is uh, going to be rotating, and they are going to be setting the agenda, as mentioned by Minister Correa. We want to highlight this coalition is an open platform for all countries of the region, for all strategic partners, regional institutions, international institutions working on this sphere. And we've invited all countries to please uh, give us their focal points for this coalition, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, and Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and also of the Central American Commission of Environment and Development, Parlo Americas. And we've also heard the interests of many others to be part of this project and of this coalition. So this is an open platform for ministries of the environment and all strategic partners and other partners that are interested. Mission and vision of the coalition. This has already been mentioned by Minister Correa, helping in this transition, helping in the re economic recovery and global challenges we have. The mission of this coalition is to be a regional platform that will make interministerial cooperation possible, also multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral cooperation. That's the main purpose of this coalition for systemic change, to increase knowledge, cooperation, and technical assistance in the region, our objectives. The first thing countries were asking us to do is to develop a common vision at the regional level. What is circular economy for Latin America and the Caribbean with so much biodiversity? 
and the region with extractive economy challenges and opportunities. Second objective, promote and increase knowledge on circular economy at all levels, local, national, regional. Quad circular economy, the principles of it, doing away with a myth that is just recycling wastes. No, this is more than that. We have to foster South-South cooperation among countries of the region, but also with other regions. We want to work with the European region, with the Global Alliance of Circular Economy, with Africa that's also developing its own Alliance of Circular Economy and with other stakeholders. And this is cooperation not only with the region, but with other regions, developing tools, indicators, PACE, or the L and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation are already doing this. Ellen MacArthur uh, were, is, is to launch Circulitis. This is, has to do with circularity and giving more training opportunities. Conrad in our foundation is already doing this. It is supporting local governments and uh, journalists and uh, the UNIDO is also doing this. We want to scale this and uh, there are organizations that are uh, supporting countries in the roadmaps. We want to mobilize resources to expand and to scale our pilot programs and initiatives. And with that, we want to increase knowledge and cooperation. These objectives are major objectives, but for us to be able to really fulfill them, we have a working plan in six strategic areas. First, continue fostering leadership dialogues among the eight partners. We have important spaces, the Minister's Forum, countries are opening these leadership spaces. I wanted to mention some that the WEF and PACE and ITB activities, but which are the main policy recommendations we can offer based on the experiences of the region? Increasing research, development of knowledge, training, and technical assistance. These are major areas. So throughout the December meeting mentioned by Mr. Correa with the countries there, we analyzed the key sectors and areas. And certainly, there are many important sectors based on our discussions and advice we'd we'll be getting from countries. The coalition will be focusing on six key sectors in the first years, plastics, electronics, uh, food and agriculture, construction, and industrial services and tourism. As you can see, the sectors are quite relevant for economic recovery and for better construction vis-a-vis -vis this pandemic. This is all I wanted to say. We're not going to be holding a dialogue with the ministers and vice ministers of the environment for you to get, have a better idea. This is an open platform. As I've said, we want to work with you. And this is our website, our email, our Twitter and Instagram. You can contact us there. Let me now go on to the next dialogue, which is on the importance of the circular economy for economic recovery and to honor Paris Accords and SDGs. Luisa Santiago, she's the Latin American lead of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Luisa, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Adriana. I want to welcome everyone, almost 500 participants in the chat. How wonderful to see we have people from all parts of Latin America and the Caribbean. What a pleasure to be here. We've been working on this for over a year. What a great day today. I want to especially welcome Mr. Mariano Castro, Vice Minister of the Ministry of the Environment of Peru, Mr. Rolando Castro, Vice Minister of Energy and Air Quality of Costa Rica, and Mr. Walter Berry, Vice Secretary, Ministry of Industry, Energy, and Mining of Uruguay. They are the three panelists 
for this discussion in the next 30 minutes. To start out, let me start with Mr. Mariano Castro, Vice Minister of Environment of Peru and Leadership of Peru in the transition and the creation of circular economy projects. One of the main objectives of the coalition, as Adriana just said, is the creation and development of the regional vision of circular economy for Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, yes, Vice Minister Castro, could you tell us about the Peruvian experience and how regional cooperation can promote this transition? It's a mega biodiverse region with an extractivist uh, platform. Could you please comment on this? Vice Minister Castro, thank you so much, Luisa. I want to thank the Barbados. I want to thank everyone for inviting us and uh, we also participated in another meeting and we've been working on this for 20 years. So this is very important at the regional process. Leo Heileman, regional director and representative of INEP, thank you so much. I also want to greet my colleagues, Rolando Castro and uh, of course, Mr. Walter Berry. Yes, this shows the interest we have on these issues. I also want to also greet the eight strategic partners of this circular economy coalition. When we prioritize the development and circular economy, we are looking at new factors to promote actions aimed at improving environmental performance of our economies and resource allocation, production, and consumption processes. We are being very proactive, and this is part of our vision on circular economy. We are proactively placing environmental issues on economic practices, and we're also contributing to promote a new principle for sustainable development, circularity. This becomes even more important in situations like the existing one where we have crisis because of the pandemic of COVID-19, in which the fundamental purpose of our countries is to recover our economies, generate investments and jobs that are so terribly affected by this terrible situation. And we want to recover this with sustainable foundation and basis. And a recent circular economy report on Latin America and the Caribbean pub published by uh, UNEP says that the government policies in Latin America and the Caribbean have not yet introduced practices because of not necessary resources. This means that economies and industries of the region are characterized uh, by uh, intensive use of natural resources. For this reason and many other reasons, we should be promoting circular economy. This is a good strategy, especially in growing the business practices that are being implemented. This should be part of the transformation process of our countries towards a natural development. In Peru, we've made great efforts on this for circular economy, not just to be understood as a uh, economic thing, but we are getting many stakeholders involved with their commitments to implement more integrated actions. That's why this effort of the coalition is so important, because we want to exchange thoughts, visions, and experiences that will facilitate this process, as pointed out by the Rio number 10 principle, we need the participation of everyone to be able to move in that direction. In Peru, we are promoting in each sector and also from the rank and file, the grassroots level, and also with the business, we are implementing roadmaps. We already have one with the manufacturing sector with four areas, sustainable industrial production, sustainable consumption, three, using uh, waste material, waste management, industrial waste management, and financing. All those uh, have uh, specific approaches and goals for the first year, the second year, and the fifth year. 
This was passed February last year, and we have an intersectorial participatory mechanism to implement this vision. We are promoting similar processes within the fisheries industrial and agriculture and agriculture and in uh, specific products, plastics and other types of products. This action plans our sectoral roadmaps that are being nurtured by concrete cases of companies. This is quite a val valuable thing because the companies themselves are promoting, executing with their sector and other academic and science sectors. They're implementing the sector's extractive processes are excellent opportunities and challenges for us to integrate circular economy models with business practices to reduce social environmental practices that are negative for the environment. To conclude, I think it's important for this interaction and this sectorial roadmaps and concrete cases we now have with companies. This is all very important for us to continue promoting activities to promote the circular economy coalition with more sustainable investments and for the creation of new jobs. That's why the regional circular economy coalition offers a tremendous opportunity to exchange best experiences and practices and to shorten the processes for us to generate changes. Thank you. Excellent. Vice Minister Mariano Castro. I'm glad you're talking about the cross-cutting aspect of circularity, a new wave of sustainable development where circular economy is central in our activities. Thank you for sharing your regional vision and how it can support countries for the strategies. Now, Mr. Rolando Castro, Vice Minister of Environment in Costa Rica. How can we reactivate the world economy, the regional economy and the lockdown situation? Most countries are now la launching economic reactivating processes as Vice Minister Castro just mentioned in G20, they're investing 50% more in activities related to fossil fuels and raw materials and renewable energies. So this is something we're trying to do, but from Costa Rica, what are you doing in your country for economic reactivation at the national level with inclusive sustainable growth and how the Circular Economy Coalition can contribute for this repairing uh, measures uh, and for us not to continue with business as usual in linear economies. Thank you so much, Luisa. Greetings from Costa Rica. What a pleasure it is for us to be part of this regional coalition and circular economy. I want to greet all the strategic partners in the region and my colleagues as well. In effect, this process has to do with reactivating our post-pandemic economies. There's temptation on the part of the governments and authorities. We want to reactivate the economy, perhaps using the fastest thing we can use or things we have on hand or at hand, but we cannot continue making the same mistakes that have increased the same problems in the past. Short-term solutions might be very costly, medium, long-term. Example has been the crisis we're now facing, unlike the pandemic, well, this is going to be permanent. In this sense, the circular economy may be a very important alternative for economic recovery for industries, services, and different stakeholders in the economy, especially because of savings 
this may generate through the circular economy. We may reduce deficiencies, waste, take better advantage of materials. We can reduce intensive use of inputs like energy and water. And at the end of the day, this constitutes savings. I think this may, may have a lot of echo in countries that need to do this as energy ministers and departments within the economic recovery, reactivation should be green. It should be economic reactivation generating quality jobs. This may be done through the use of competitive advantages of each one of the countries. For instance, in our country, since we have a um, energy grid or matrix using renewable energy, we think that electrifying transportation services may be very beneficial because we're using the matrix and also the oil industry. The energy matrix may also create a lot of green jobs, sustainable construction. These are examples of what we are trying to bet on in my country. We have a bioeconomy national strategy, 2020-2030 strategy to sustainably use natural capital of my country. So we think this may generate sustainable development, but especially regenerative development in rural areas that are many times abandoned or neglected and they have higher human development in terms of the population sometimes so we want to have the participation of businesses for many benefits we also have a circular economy guideline for local governments 82 municipalities in the country are participating in a logic of circular economy. The other question, Lisa, you were asking about the region. Let me tell you, we think that the Latin American and Caribbean region has high natural resource potential. This gives us a very big framework of possibilities for development and innovation if we better apply and enforce circular economy. This will allow us to generate jobs, employment, increase GDP of the country. Some studies, the Economist Intelligence Unit say that this could even be 7% of the GDP of the region. And this is also something that can help us reduce emissions up to 70 or 80 percent of the existing emissions. This also has important economic impact and on people's health, which is translated in economic reactivation and reduction of health care services in the different countries. We think we have to speed up implementation of circular economy in the region. If we do it individually, we would have less impact. And regional work we could have could boost work throughout the continent. And the implementation of circular economy, sharing experiences, attracting multilateral collaboration, and establishing trade commercial partnerships, as Adriana was saying, with countries where circular economy is already part of the economy. As for instance, the European Union, we are selling a lot of products to the European Union from our region. If we see it as a regional strategy, this may have faster impact and a bigger impact for us and the rest of the world. Therefore, we invite all countries of the region to be part of this coalition. 
so that together we might implement this faster for us to be able to harvest the, the benefits in each one of our countries. Thank you. Thank you, Rolando Castro. What an excellent vision on the economic advantage of circular economy. More than the environmental benefits, the economic advantage is key on this. Thank you for your very clear words. Now, let's give the floor to Mr. Walter Berry from Uruguay. Economic advantages and environmental benefits for reconstruction. Circular economy also has a lot of potential to create jobs, according to the ILO. Under this economic models, we could create in Latin America and the Caribbean 4.8 million net jobs up to 2030. From the Uruguay perspective, what are the policies and incentives for circular economy to contribute to a transition in a fair, inclusive fashion? Mr. Berry, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. What a pleasure to be representing the government of my country in this coalition. Uruguay is a small country. The territory of my country is very small. We are located in South America, as you know. Circular economy is not alien to our experience. We uh, define ourselves as a natural country. Our territory is 100% food producing territory. We do not have great or major geographic interference. Our weather, our climate is uh, very benign. So we're betting on circular economy and we're betting on protecting the environment. In Uruguay, 98% of energy we produce and consume is based on renewable sources. Half hydraulic and wind energy, solar energy. This year, the f we have the first the wind energy generator. This is the first one in our history. I wanted to highlight this in this forum. Therefore, we have enormous challenges as well with circular economy. It gives us new opportunities to generate jobs, but it's also a big challenge. For us to accomplish this, we should adopt and generate conditions for circular economy and the transition. The institutional structure of our country is quite sound and we don't have many labor conflicts. Our state is uh, overseeing labor conditions of the economically active population and producing population of our country. So we, this is a, a excellent uh, ground to generate partnership of small, medium-sized enterprises at the national level, at the municipal level, working on inclusive circular economy so that we may identify four areas of opportunity to generate jobs. First, different jobs that circular economy allows us to have uh, the repairing aspect through different trades, so common in Latin America, but they're not highly valued. We can identify two lines. On one hand, strengthening incentives and repair activities and useful life, and also training and incorporating in technologies for repair services according to advantages of new technologies and ITs uh, with the participation of youth in these activities and information technology and information services are important areas for transition towards circular economy. The different processes if, uh, so that we can stop selling products to start selling services 
and the most traditional industries require now environmental services. Therefore, it is necessary to be ready for these new demands to take advantage of new business activities and opportunities in each sector to boost the use of waste matter so that it's not just the sub-product. Another key aspect of circular economy in our country is the life cycle of a product or service. This implies starting to think about the design of those products with the environmental circular variable to reach the end of the supply and the production chain. We have to start looking at the beginning of each one of those projects. And we have to design in a more assertive manner, being more economical and uh, uh, simpler methods for sustainability. In Latin America, we have abundant natural resources. We all know this natural resources that are fundamental raw material for more sustainable products that international marketplaces will be demanding. We have to prepare ourselves for more sustainable production to generate appropriate conditions so that our productive sectors can be adapted to this to generate this circular economy. We're working on this in my country in our government policies and the industry energy mining ministry that I represent and also the Ministry of the Environment, we're using resources through the value chain as much as we can. Detecting businesses related to circular economy in different productive sectors, for instance, through a convening process of our ministry, we are co-funding right now technical economic feasibility studies for early detection of opportunities to promote creation of technical capacities and skills. We have received different, different proposals from different productive sectors, and we are going to be implementing four studies. Also the use of timber, and we are using the waste coming from wood, from timber, and we're generating income and reducing environmental impact of this industry on the environment. We're also supporting the academic sector in a cross-cutting manner through thesis, postgraduate thesis, BA thesis to incorporate gradually in the training of our professionals, the idea of cross-cutting circular economy. And this is to be included in the curricular programs. We understand we should create the appropriate incentives. This is something we're working on for the productive sector. We know it responds when government messages are clear. And when we look at the risk related to those innovation processes. Excellent. Thank you for mentioning the need to work on those conditions for this system to work. And thank you for sharing the way you are looking at job generation in the different areas in circular economy. So we close. This is the first round of questions now. The objective of working and talking about conditions of circular economy and the development of local economies, green economies, and response in the face of this pandemic. We go back to Mr. Castro from Costa Rica. We go on to the second round of questions to understand how the circular economy contributes to major world challenges, climate change, climate crisis, and biodiversity loss and reducing pollution as well. Costa Rica is a global benchmark with its plan for 2050. It is also an observation of the ecosystem projects in that country. So how do you see the contribution of circular economy to fight climate change? And how are you integrating this in your plans? Thank you so much, Luisa, for your question. I think 
this is very important. As a country, in terms of public policies, we have different initiatives. I've mentioned the National Bioeconomics Plan and the National Plan. We're working rather on a national, sorry, we're working on a, a circular economy national plan. And we already have the decarbonization plan in my country. All strategies should be moving in the same direction towards a, an economy using less carbon, an economy making better use of natural resources. I think there's a great relationship between both aspects. Let me also say that although Costa Rica launched its decarbonization plan in 2019, the country for many years had already tried to decarbonize its economy through, for instance, in the last 70 years, betting at an electric matrix with renewable energy. This is something many countries are doing now. This is a very important investment for each country. We've been doing this for over 70 years to consolidate the results we're now having. Another important issue in terms of carbon emissions is deforestation. Our country is also making important efforts, especially in the last 40 years to reverse the process of soil use changes and deforestation. We now have 54% of forest tree coverage in our country. These efforts are also part of the same work. So decarbonization is also part of the value added in our country with ambitious goals, identifying sectors that have greater impact on carbon emissions. And we're launching important goals and activities with each one of those sectors, transportation, public transportation, cargo systems, the national electric system, the domestic grid, the industrial sector, the integral management of waste, and uh, food systems, the cattle and livestock systems, those are part of the decarbonization plan with goals that have to do with decarbonizing those sectors, but also using strategies as the circular economy. Something important is that thanks to the IDB support, just recently, we launched a study where we determined the benefit and importance of decarbonizing our economy, how important this is for our country. According to this study, decarbonization, decarbonization between 2020 and 2050 could have a total benefit for our country of $78 billion. This constitutes an important benefit. It would take into account that we have to make an investment to continue decarbonizing the economy. This investment, according to the study, is $37 billion for us to make those changes set forth in the National Decarbonization Plan. But the net benefit for the country would be $41 billion, which is significant contribution of decarbonization. And this is something we've documented. So then this means that in spite of the fact Costa Rica may have small emissions vis-a-vis -vis carbon emissions throughout the world. For our country to be a decarbonization laboratory may also constitute important benefits for other countries. 
So this is something we're betting on in my country. And on the other hand, this may also constitute benefits in our economy, but this could also help so that other economies may also start decarbonizing following models they can use in their own countries. And this is part of our regional partnerships. We are ready to share this information and also to learn from other countries. So we see a major relationship between implementing our commitments, our climate commitments at the international level, economic reactivation and the use of circular economy as a methodology that may help us also not only reduce CO2 emissions, but also reduce impact on other natural resources. And as I said in my previous comments, for us to be able to create quality jobs. So we see a major relationship in all this. And we think what we're betting on, on decarbonizing our economy and working on biodiversity and circular economy, there are so many benefits. We see great potential if we all work together in the region. Excellent, Mr. Castro. Costa Rica is a very good example for everyone to follow. Vice Minister Mariano Castro from Peru. This is such a good discussion we're having, but we have to limit our time now. We do not have much time. Only three minutes. Yes, Mariano, uh, we are running out of time. Value retention, remanufacturing in some sectors, for instance, repair and remanufacturing. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yes, we're having uh, audio problems. Thank you. Yes, so the International Resource Panel, we know that value retention process of remanufacturing could reduce raw materials 80, 90%. This would constitute great benefits to protect biodiversity. Which are, are the benefits of circular economy for biodiversity? How can we integrate it in biological biodiversity? Please. Thank you so much. I will try to summarize as much as I can. There's a direct relationship in all this and contribution as well. In this process, as Leo Heilemann said, we've been working on this for some time on the biodiversity national strategy for about 20 years now, Peru. And that's when it was passed. We included various aspects of uh, enabling conditions, training incentives and information systems for sustainable use of our biodiversity in processes where circular economy is an important input. We also have to add value. So if we look at the roadmap for the industry sector, there we see the need of sensitizing SMEs and micro companies as well, micro enterprises as well. This is important in the national economy to generate jobs, income, revenues, and if people can get a course on green purchases, green acquisition, circular economy, sustainable development of or usage of biodiversity. If we do this, we could have inclusive circular economy and people would know about it. This is an important contribution and resource. We would also be contributing from the environment policy side to reduce poverty and generate more jobs. This is a fundamental need in this economic reactivation process, but taking, of course, 
care of the environment and fighting climate change. Well, there are strategies, information in our countries on the utilization and conservation of biodiversity. There we have very important elements to promote the circular economy in the different regions of our countries. And we have so much cultural biodiversity and diversity as well. We can all use circular economy for this in the different regions of our countries. Yes, thank you so much. Now, let me give the floor to Walter Verri from Uruguay. The last question, the coalition will have a technical group on industrial symbiosis. What is the experience in Uruguay on barriers to implement circular economy businesses in the region? How can this be implemented in industries? Only three minutes, if at all possible, please. Yes, thank you. I will try to be brief, only three minutes. In terms of public policies, there are various challenges and opportunities to implement circular economic models in the region. Some of the main are, for instance, the need to generate thermal capacity to promote new technological developments. There are so many opportunities, but they're not all economically attractive or profitable. We should look at the development of the different solutions. Each region has particular characteristics and also should have tailor-made solutions. It's also necessary for us to have industrial business leaders with a vision of the entire life cycle of products and services they provide. They have to be sensitive enough to study and finance business with a comprehensive perspective, looking for opportunities and looking at the environmental liabilities they face to promote new business models. Cultural changes are undoubtedly one of the major challenges we face. We have to break away from the linear production model, the obsolescence, business as usual model in the production of goods and services. Our industry has to start producing goods with other qualities, with different qualities. This is a major challenge. The traditional barrier of economic costs that companies have to face, we have to look at this through a balance with the um, end product. Access to financing of sustainable projects. Those are barriers we have to bring down. And the development of these initiatives have a certain risk. Uh, we have to have tolerance in uh, paying terms and interests as well. This is something we have to work on through the development agencies of our countries, but also through the private and public banking systems. We have to promote standards, administrative processes, so that this transition is more efficient for all actors. We have to strengthen skills, capabilities through seminars, workshops, and training sessions for us to study the relevance of circular economy. Finally, perhaps the most important one is uh, sustainable uh, uh, projects that we have to have sustainable models to generate this type of product. They have to be attractive enough. I am summarizing, uh, summarizing everything. So regional cooperation is a very good opportunity for us to understand other opportunities in international markets for this symbiotic 
relationship in the different countries in terms of our natural resources, sensitizing everyone, the training of everyone. This is going to be very important throughout the region. If each one of us contributes with our knowledge and expertise, this is of the utmost importance. And this may, of course, uh, generate information on the impact of circular economy through the exchange of experiences and policies throughout the different countries. And many times we know that uh, we have to have South-South cooperation, triangular cooperation that may be very important tools for these objectives. And second, regional cooperation may also have a fundamental role supporting a vision of circular economy and its comparative impact and a single methodology in a cross-cutting fashion. This is also very important throughout the region and having systematic visions on progress being made in each one of the countries to optimize design and implementation in another country. And finally, at the public policy level of the region, I think I have uh, respected the three minute uh, 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 frame allocated to me. Yes, thank you. I want to thank all the three panelists. Now, let me give the floor to Adriana. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa and vice ministers and ministers. Thank you so much. This dialogue could continue many more hours. This shows the great interest we have in the region and this issue. So many things we have to share on this. So we shall continue in this coalition. We shall continue with this dialogue. How important it was for us to listen to ministers, vice ministers of environment, of um, industries, energy, and mining. Thank you so much. Let us now go on to the closing session. We have so many questions we are trying to answer through the chat, but we will not have enough time to answer each one of them. Let me make some final remarks, but I want to give the floor to Alex Ayer, Technical Director of Environmental Urban Sectoral Affairs of the Environment Ministry, Sustainable Development Ministry as well of Colombia. You have the floor, Alex. Thank you so much, Adriana. I also want to thank everyone who made the launching of the Circular Economy Coalition policy uh, possible, rather. I want to thank all the ministers, vice ministers, because they've shared experience and expertise. I'm certain everything they've said will contribute towards disseminating and spreading circular economy throughout the region. Let me say that from everything we've discussed today and the contributions made by my colleagues of Peru, Costa Rica, and Uruguay, so much progress has been made at the regional level on circular economy. This is something we have to learn from. Everything that other countries are doing to unify, to unite this dialogue and knowledge and expertise we have on circular economy and to do this at the regional level. Something interesting is also so many contributions and observations I am reading on the chat. Incredible participation coming from all over the world, the academy, public sector, private sector, everyone asking questions, showing and sharing experiences. And this is something we want to promote through circular economy. We want to hear about those experiences, to know what you're doing in your country so that we can replicate it at the regional level. So generating a common vision is the main objective I think of this circular economy coalition at the regional level. And the other thing is how do we provide this to the citizen? And I think the message of our ministers and vice ministers is to include citizens. How do we share this technical knowledge? And how do we go from the very expert uh, type of terminology and talking about this very sophisticated terminology to be shared with citizens. Uh, 
And so we want to talk to entrepreneurs, people who are doing recycling, small, medium-sized companies, micro companies, so that they can start using this concept for us to be a lot more efficient in the use of resources and generate utilization of wastes in our economy, generating new business models. I think we're facing a very important challenge here. And I think that the collaboration part, this is something we've already mentioned. And mobilizing is also very important. How do we mobilize resources to enforce and apply these concepts in real life? How do we launch promotion sensitive sensation campaigns said all this is very important so that in the countries that are participating with the help of those eight strategic partners that are implementing this so that we may really take this very important leap towards circular economy in our countries i think the conditions are there the pandemic has made us reflect on how to be more efficient in the use of resources, how to better protect our ecosystems, how to do more with less. In this sense, I think circular economy is, is showing that it can be a major tool for us to recover, to take a new look at our ecosystems and give them the viability throughout the production and sustainable consum consumption chains throughout the continent. So I truly celebrate the launching of the Circular Economy Coalition. I want to congratulate everyone who made this possible. In Colombia, we're going to do everything in our power to continue working on this for excellent results this year and short-term results as well. I invite everyone, please join our effort in this coalition so that we can start working in a very articulated fashion and we can launch many circular economy projects through this coalition. Thank you, Adriana. And I give you the floor for this uh, final remarks. This is going to be very important for all of us participating in this launching event. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting all the stakeholders and actors that are here with us. We're about to close. We're so happy to have had such an active chat. So many questions on this chat. So what are the next steps? Yes, you might be wondering that. How can you be part of this coalition? It has members that are beneficiaries, active members. The beneficiaries are going to be all those that are interested in participating in the events, in the webinars, in the dialogues we're going to be organizing, and the active members. That's where we want to identify areas of cooperation and have a more complete area of cooperation. So the first step we invite you to get in touch with us, to contact us, to express your area of interest, what exactly it is that you're interested in doing. Could you please mute your microphones? Thank you. And after you get in touch with us, we can start seeing the different areas that we can uh, start strengthening synergies of cooperation. This is of vital importance because now, as we've mentioned, according to the sectoral priorities of the different countries. We're going to start working in different uh, working groups uh, through electronic means, construction, electronics, uh, industrial symbiosis, and tourism, among others. If you're working on any of these areas, please let us know that you want to participate in the sectoral events. And from there on, we can identify areas of cooperation. If you need training to get to know these areas better, let us know so that we can identify demand of different tools. This is the first step. The second step, which is very important, as we've already mentioned here, is uh, the regional vision. This is very important. We want to see 
of what circular economy is all about for the region in the next six months we're going to be working on this and in the coalition we're going to be working with different partners and countries uh, to organize seminars these are going to be online seminars circular economy principles sectorial principles and issues of the different sectors that i've mentioned and let me take advantage of this opportunity to invite you to some events we're going to be having in the following months. Tomorrow, uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation will have Circle Economic Show. They're going to be holding discussions on their new publication, Goals and Universal Policies for Circular Economy. We invite you in this week, February 4th base, we'll be launching the circular economy agenda with a debate with different ministers of other regions, as for instance, uh, Minister Schmidt and other participants, we invite you. Peru will also have an international circular economy seminar February 16th through the 18th. And with the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, they're launching the circular round training local governments in Costa Rica, Peru, Colombia, Guatemala, and Chile. And in May, they're also going to be holding a uh, workshop for journalists and reporters. And uh, another organization is supporting 11 countries and their circular roadmap, a international benchmarking. Um, and uh, this is going to be in April, at the end of April. And so many, many events. We want to uh, continue organizing with the plastics event as well and many other activities that are of great interest. Where can you see us? Where can you write us? You see it right here on your screen. We're launching this coalition today, but we're also launching our website. You can see the address and the email, please. And we also invite you to follow us through our different uh, uh, social media, Twitter and Instagram. Without further say, we thank you so much for being with us. We hope to continue working with you. And uh, we want to full heartedly thank all the members of the coalition, Colombia, Peru, Costa Rica, and Dominican Republic, and my dear friends and partners of the eight different institutions of the coalition. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Greetings from Uruguay. Thank you. Good afternoon. De Costa Rica. Greetings from Costa Rica and thank you. Gracias, thank you so much. Greetings from Bucaramanga, Colombia. Gracias. Thank you. What a pleasure seeing so many names and friends. Thank you for being with us. New names as well. Thank you. Congratulations, Adriana. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thank you so much. Greetings from Venezuela. Thank you. Good afternoon.